Okay, so this is going to be an update video on the Urban Go Bag. And there was a video that was done in the past. Uh, it still has a lot of good content in it. But we're going to go through everything again because there have been a lot of updates to this. And uh, as a result of reading and incorporating a lot of the comments that I saw on YouTube, uh, quite a few things have changed. And so instead of me just giving you the updates, I'm just going to quickly go through everything one, one more time. Uh, okay, so on the outside, I got some EMT shears, a glow stick, I have a fixed blade knife, I have a jet scream whistle, there's a flashlight right up here, which just goes into the water bladder, um, and there is a water bottle, which you can use to boil water, along with a carabiner. Uh, one of the updates, which I don't think is, is in the other video, is right here. There are zip ties, and these are heavy-duty, like 100 or 200 pound zip ties, which are just run up through the molly and back down. And these are probably like 18-inch zip ties. This is, this is one pretty cool update. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what all the updates have been, so you probably uh, are just going to have to compare this to the old video. So on the front, there are some uh, gear ties. There's a weight-bearing care carabiner at 4,000 pounds. There's a few pens and a sharpie, which is very important. There's another gear tie over here. So we'll just start from the bottom and we'll go up to the top. Okay. Down here, this is the medical pouch. Um, we know the zippers first aid, and I put these on the zippers so that uh, if I'm incapacitated and I tell someone to go get my first aid kit, they will be able to find it. So inside here, there is a CPR breathing mask. And this one, the air has kind of died out. I'd recommend keeping it in the pouch that they come in instead of a plastic bag so the air stays there. But uh, again, the, the plastic pouch that it comes in, the hard shell will add a lot more weight. There's some iodine. There's some gloves, just in, in Ziploc bags. Uh, there's a splint some saline wound wash. This is actually some sterile preservative free uh, like lens a contact solution. There is some um, hand sanitizer. There's a full splint. And then in here, one of the big upgrades is a first aid kit, um, which is right here. And the first aid kit, I'm probably going to break this out into a separate video, but um, this actually does not really ride in the backpack. This actually rides up front in the vehicle. And um, the reason why I keep it outside and separate it from the bag is because um, in the event that there's an accident, it's going to be easier for me to access, especially if I'm the one involved in the accident. It's going to be easier for me to get to if I'm trapped in my car when it's right there uh, by my feet. So I actually detach this from the bag, but if I needed to, like I've shown you here, I can just, uh, there, there's basically an, an empty cavity in the go bag where I can just put this back if I needed to. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on this, but uh, it's clearly marked first aid. You have a Sharpie on the outside with uh, a, a, like, let's say a yard of uh, tape. This is uh, uh, some high quality duct tape, basically. Um, so there's going to be a separate video on this. You'll have to look out for that. Um, but that's what that, that's all contained in this first compartment. So up here, um, I have a uh, what do you call it? A Baofeng radio with an extra battery. Um, this just rides up top. This this has uh, all of the repeaters programmed for my area, as well as some simplex frequencies. If I have a buddy who also has a ham radio, I can communicate that just right to his radio. Uh, some extra matches, a map of the area, uh, and I live in an urban area, thus this is an urban go bag video. So I have maps for LA, for San Diego, some binoculars. Um, that, these are good for scouting at, at a distance, a GPS. Um, and this also can go off of a highway or road, so if you're like out in wherever, if you're on a trail or something, you can actually find your position still, and you can also put in waypoints to find your way back to camp. It's also, use, it's also useful in the car 
in case your phone loses reception if you're on like a backcountry road or something. That's one of the things that I've always uh, stressed about with these kinds of backpacks is these are not just going to come out in a SHTF situation. They're probably going to be used on a more of a daily basis or a weekly basis when you run into small problems and you can overcome them with this bag. Um, I have some extra spare batteries for flashlights. I have some Gorilla Tape. I have some of these stuff, things are outdated and this bag is uh, almost two years old now, I think. So we can actually use this as a comparison video from the first video to see what's kind of held up and what hasn't held up. This is kind of just like a checklist of things that, that uh, are inside of the, of, of the bag, along with some notes about things that I've, uh, upgrades that I need to make. That piece of paper, for example, has not really held up. That's one of the things that I might want to change. I have some short uh, little radios here. I have a headlamp, which is very important. Definitely get one of these. Um, and hopefully you also bring with you some spare batteries for it. I have, and these are kind of just things, I haven't honestly been into a lot of these pockets for a while. Uh, so this is kind of just interesting to go back through here. Uh, signaling mirror. Um, so this, this compartment, as you can tell, is gonna be used for signaling for small problems that we'll, we'll need some duct tape for. It's for communications and it's for finding your position or getting out of a situation with GPS. The, the binoculars come into play there. I have some of these like Ranger Band. These are basically tire tubes that have been chopped up, but they are make excellent heavy, heavy duty rubber bands. I have some uh, uh, hex keys, basically, uh, or some uh, Allen wrenches. That comes in handy. I have here, honestly, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Oh, these are a list of repeaters and radio frequencies in the area across the state. And so that's one thing. If you have a radio, make sure you program in all of your frequencies for areas that you're going to be in. I have a list of items that are expiring inside the backpack and when. And I'm going to have to look at this because I see a few of these items have expired, but most of them are still into the future. Um, and one of the things is you can use Excel to quickly make one of those little documents and put some basic formulas in there so that you get notified when something in your bag expires. Maybe I'll make a video on how to do that. This is like, uh, honestly, there's no point in having this in here anymore, but the only useful function here is a compass. Actually, this is kind of useful. There's a compass in here. I think it is still working, and there is a temperature gauge. Then I also have a few extra button compasses in case one fails, or if I want to double check that this one compass is telling me the truth, I can compare the result on the compass to others. So, let's get into here. So, this is a uh, LA Police Gear, it's the uh, 72 hour bag. Uh, one, one thing that was a misnomer in the last video was the weight. The weight of this is only about 25 to 28 pounds, so it is fully manageable. One thing that I would caution people against when they do these go bags, like I have done, which I probably need to change, is the overall look of your bag. Now this one kind of screams tactical, it screams supplies. It's honestly something that I'm trying to move away from as I continue to build out my preparations. Uh, so it's something to watch out for. I would go for a bag that is gonna be a much lower profile. It probably does not have all this molly webbing. I think the black color is fine, especially in an urban setting, it, it will blend in. But this one does scream tactical quite a bit and I don't really want to give off that vibe. Uh, if you look at some of my other videos, which I'll be coming out with in, in the future, uh, it's going to be very hard to tell if you were to see me on the street that, uh, you know, I have a lot of stuff, basically. My car, uh, how my car is set up, um, it's not going to scream gear by any means. And so it's not going to draw a lot of attention, and that allows me to get in and out of situations pretty easily. Uh, I have a right in the rain notebook up here, and this is in like an inside admin pouch in the main compartment. I have another glow, another glow stick. These glow sticks are going to be really useful, especially if you have a lot of them, because you can uh, mark routes, you can uh, signal people, you can signal your vehicle by putting it on top of a car, you can uh, clear, use it, as a, use it as a beacon outside of a room to show that the room has been cleared. Uh, it's also an underwater light because these are waterproof. There's a lot of good uses for the chem lights slash glow sticks. Uh, I have some super glue, very useful. It's kept in a bag in case it explodes or breaks. And I always got to double check that this one's current because one time I had to use it and I took it out and it was completely, uh, fr not frozen, but it was all stuck together and completely dried out. So 
So check your uh, super glue or buy ones that won't get stuck like that. Another snap light. Um, this is a very terrible Walmart branded multi-tool, but it's better than not having one. It's really heavy and it's probably best to upgrade that actually at some point. A deck of playing cards uh, in case in case uh, I need to, you know, I'm kind of have some downtime and uh, you want a quick game, you fold a full deck of playing cards. Not bad to have. I have a like very lightweight pocket knife sharpener. It also has a serrated sharpener. And that's about it for here. The only other thing is I have is I just a backup uh, folding knife. Okay, so in the main, main compartment, I have a bag of toiletries. So in here, this is probably going to be, believe it or not, you're going to be using this a lot more than you think. Uh, so you want to make sure these kinds of things you don't uh, cut corners on. Uh, you got shampoo, you got your lip balm, conditioner, toothpaste, cough drops, nail clippers. You got your deodorant, your dental floss, your moisturizer. You got your sunscreen. You got maybe some hydrocortisone cream. You got some toilet paper. This isn't a full roll of toilet paper. I've taken some of the other comments to heart, and I've scaled down the roll of, roll of toilet paper because you're probably not going to need all that much. Got some eye drops. Got some razor blades. You got a backup toothbrush. Um, that seems to be covering most of what's in here. We got some Q-tips. So Q-tips are another good one. Okay, then we got uh, some clothes and food. So we got change of like underwear. We got t-shirts. We got a change of shirts. You got a little face towel. You got your bandana, extra pair of socks. Uh, a few things that are probably missing from this would be a change of pants or some warmer, warmer pants to upgrade to. The climate that I'm in right now that I'm living in does not really dictate that I'm gonna need some really cold weather gear like an extra jacket. And I actually do have some other things like sole bivvies or for example, this tarp, you know, other survival kind of blankets that I could use if I really needed to keep warm. So if your climate dictates it, I would definitely have extra cold weather gear, beanies come to mind, jackets and pants, wool socks, etc. But I have some light clothing items here. I could probably beef this up though. Uh, one thing that I'll pull out now, this is a new addition. This is a tarp. Looks like a normal tarp. It's actually lined with a foil lining on the inside. And this is probably one of the best buys that I've made this year uh, is this tarp upgrade. It went from a normal blue Walmart tarp to this one with this upgrade. This is just going to improve your shelter. It's going to keep you warmer. It can also be, it's basically a survival blanket, but it also can be used to make a shelter. It can be a blanket. It can be used to cover something, you know, uh, it honestly has tons and tons of, of uses. If there was a accident situation, someone was like going into shock and they needed to, you know, to preserve their body heat, boom, you can wrap them up in this. So this is a great, great multi-purpose piece of gear. This is an all weather tarp with a foil lining on the inside. This is five by seven, pretty lightweight, extremely multi-purpose and highly recommended. I have a flashlight here. Um, this one is going to be pretty bright and, uh, have some backup batteries for it. So definitely recommend a strong flashlight with extra batteries. I've got some leather gloves, so you probably need those at some point. And here I actually have some aerial flares. Uh, I got these on sale somewhere and, uh, basically they're two aerial flares. They'll shoot up like a hundred meters into the eye, uh, into the sky in case you're backpacking or something. But you probably don't want to bury these deep inside your backpack like I have because if you need them, you're probably going to need to signal someone fairly quickly. And so you don't want to have them buried inside here. Same with the whistle. The whistle is right on the outside. If I needed to get someone's attention quickly, quickly drop the bag and grab the whistle. It's also why I keep, like for example, the knife on the outside. The other thing that I actually have running on another bag that I honestly need to put back on here is pepper spray. If you're going to keep pepper spray inside your go bag, especially for urban settings, it's a good recommendation. Highly recommended pepper spray. Keep it on the outside so you can access it very quickly. I've seen videos where people have pepper spray, but it's deep inside their backpack. They have no chance of getting to it. I have like 100 feet of paracord here. This is a really terrible uh, spool thing that I built. It's uh, literally used some cardboard and, and some duct tape, but it really allows me to keep the paracord organized. And uh, you know, this is a free, basically, spool tool that I made. It works really well. It could be a little bit smaller. It's pretty lightweight. It's held up pretty well, but uh, like I said, a few of the things in here, I'm not super concerned with, uh, you know, really spending all the extra bucks to get if I can get away with making it on my own. 
Um, let's see. I got a life straw. I've never taken it out of the out of its box, but apparently if you keep it in the bag, it can stay in here for an extremely long time, let's say 15 to 20 years. Uh, the packaging, you can see that it's wearing a little bit, but I think overall it's still going to work fine in a situation like this. I have some uh, other filtration devices which I could put in here, some you know uh, higher grade like catadine filters, um, but those are currently not running in here. I have a full tank of propane, uh, or uh, sorry, it's butane, and that powers this little mini stove, which might also be a new addition. I honestly don't think this was in the last video. But uh, this little mini stove, uh, basically, uh, you got this going, and uh, you just screw it right on top of this gas tank. And you have a mini stove. So that is definitely going to come in handy, and has come in handy in the past. Here I have a fire kit. This is in a little Amazon Basics pouch. doesn't need to be anything fancy. But this has everything you're going to need to start a fire. Your matches, your lighter, your uh, ferro rod. you got some uh, trioxane bars to fire starter. And then you got some uh, storm-proof all-weather matches in here. So you're probably going to be able to start a fire in most conditions with that right out of that pouch. Got some hand warmers that have come in handy. I have some uh, baby wipes, some Pampers baby wipes. I have a uh, N95 dust mask. For certain kinds of hazards, uh, that's good to have. You'll notice, like for example, you trim away the excess packaging so that you can save some room. I've got another pack of gloves in here. This is also cool. Um, like I said, I'm not sure w w which parts of these are new, which parts of these are in the old video, which is why I'm going through everything again. But I have this here. This is a little like a Nike soccer bag, basically. If you needed to detach your main bag and go like gather supplies, you could just get to this little drawstring bag and put it on your back. So it's like a little uh, supplemental backpack stored in here. I have some quarters for parking and showers as well. I used to have a huge thing of quarters, but they're super heavy. So that's been trimmed down to let's say three or four dollars in quarters. Uh, some trash bags, a soul bivy. Uh, this seems to be okay, but like I said, I'm probably gonna gravitate towards the tarp first. I have a water bottle. I have one water bottle like because water is very heavy. And uh, I have the ability to purify water with like iodine tablets. I also have the life straw. But this can get you out of a like a quick situation. But obviously you're not going to have enough water for anything long term. I have another backup knife sharpener. I have some food rations bars. These have been held, held up pretty well. I recommend these kind of solid block calorie bars if you're going to be storing your backpack in a car and it's going to be subject to heat. These are going to hold up pretty well. As you can see they actually have been holding up fairly well. Uh, they have a long shelf life, and they would probably provide three days worth of food. So those are recommended. I have some batteries. Now this, I don't carry a full huge pack of 36 batteries. I have about a, let's say less than half of the batteries, AAA batteries, for various uh, things to power various devices inside the bag. I have a full bag of zip ties, because you're probably going to run into situations where you need to fix stuff and need zip ties. I have uh, a little... Uh, what do you call these things? A a bungee hook. This is probably about one foot of a bungee cord. Some little miscellaneous what-if situations that I've thrown into here. I have some WD-40, like a travel size. Highly recommend you keep some kind of lubrication device in your bag. I have some water tablets. Um, uh, some iodine tablets. Those have fallen out of the original packaging. Um, so what I recommend for stuff like this is they have uh, they have these uh, basically uh, six mil plastic bags, like three inch by three inch bags, which I've been using recently. I bought a pack of a hundred for like ten bucks. They're heavy duty small bags, which these kinds of things will store perfectly in. I can show you an example right here that I have. Sorry, I have, I have another kit handy, so I'll just pull this out. So for example, I have meds stored in a first aid kit in these little. Uh, three inch by three inch bags so you can see like this iodine would fit perfectly in there and I can you can store all different kinds of stuff you can protect them these are pretty heavy duty and thick and that's going to hold up a lot better than this kind of packaging which has you can see broken down over two years of time being worn down in this bag so look for these they're on Amazon these little uh, thick plastic bags I keep a flare a small flare just one little small flare if I need to get someone's attention signal 
some floss. Floss is definitely recommended because it is very, very strong. And also you can run into a situation where you have to floss your teeth. So that's about it, honestly, in the entire bag. I already mentioned the water bottle. This is what you're gonna go to if you need to like purify water. Um, and so you can use the, your butane in your stove, basically the pocket rocket, that little stove over the butane, to boil off some water. It's a third, third way to purify water. Um, that's honestly about it. As I just give it a quick one over of the bag. That's about it. I told you about the fixed blade knife. This fixed blade is a Gerber Prodigy. It also has a glass breaker on here. It's useful for getting into vehicles and stuff like that. Um, that's about it. Um, one other thing that you might want to add into here, which I'm noticing that I don't currently have, is for this butane stove, you may want to have like a very lightweight pot. And that pot can be used to boil water or to heat up food. Uh, that's one thing that I'm noticing that I'm missing. I probably repurposed it into something for backpacking or another kit. Um, but anyway, I just want to give you guys a quick update on the backpack and a few things that have changed. The backpack has undergone a lot of changes, a lot of upgrades. It's definitely been slimmed down quite a bit. Uh, and I have a huge pile of junk in front of the backpack now that I'm going to have to put back in here. But I'm doing it for you guys. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.